Well, uh, my name is Jane Monheit. I'm a jazz musician. Uh, I sing, uh, jazz vocalist, and I have been doing this my entire life. Uh, literally since I was born, I've done nothing else but sing. It's just completely who I am. Um, I'm a mom. I am an animal person. I also love to teach. And that kind of sums it up, I guess. <laughs> Amazing. Perfect. So you say you've been singing forever and a day. How do you describe your joy of music? And where do you reckon your passion came from? Well, definitely from my family. I come from a really, really musical family. Everybody can sing. Um, so many people play instruments as well. And there was just so much music around me uh, every day of my life from the time I was born. Um, and then I was lucky enough to be in really, really musical schools as well. I grew up on Long Island um, in the 80s and the 90s. And that was like a golden age for music departments and schools. So I had these incredible teachers. I was super encouraged by all of my teachers, even like my math teachers or my science teachers would be like, yeah, you're going to be a great musician someday. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had all this encouragement and it just, you know, it continued to just build and build and build my confidence in myself. And um, by the time I was an adult, I was like ready to take on the world. I was a lucky Amazing. kid. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, really lucky. That's amazing though, because kind of when you have a, a, a passion for something, but maybe you're not quite sure which taking stuff I and mean, when you've got people behind you that are really willing you on kind of can't ask for any more really yeah it's a it's a really wonderful feeling especially as a young person you know what I mean to have all the grown-ups around me believe in me so strongly was life-changing you know yeah amazing so what kind of music did you like when you were growing up then was it kind of like the pop stuff or did you love you know all the different genres I loved everything I mean I listened to a ton of jazz at home uh, all the music I sing now, I already was listening to as a little tiny kid. I listened to a lot of the same records as I did when I was very small. Um, but, you know, also a ton of musical theater, tons of musical theater, and then pop music as well. I mean, I grew up in a really good time for pop singers. I mean, we had like Whitney Houston, we had Mariah, you know what I mean? Like we had yeah. great, great vocalists happening. So I had all kinds of good stuff around me. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you reckon your earliest memory is of performing? Is there a particular kind of thing that really sticks in your head? There is. There is. Yeah, there was a big moment that was my first like public performance. And it was a huge deal for me. I was eight years old. And I sang in front of my whole town. It was like the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. And my school was there and I got the big solo and I sang it came upon a midnight clear. And I'll never forget it as long as I live. You know what I mean? It was just like, oh, all right, I got this. I can do the thing. I can do the thing. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. You know what I mean? It was great. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's amazing. And that still sticks with you very, very vividly. Yeah, I can remember standing there. Yeah, eight years old. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. And so as you grew up, you said you loved jazz, which obviously now is something that you really, really, you know, that that's kind of your thing. And um, what kind of favorite genre thing back then? And, you know, how has that changed? Well, you know, honestly, I got to say my taste in music is exactly the same as it has been since I was like born. It's been totally instinctive. Um, and I think that's probably just because I was lucky enough to grow up in this family where it was just, everything was nurtured. So yeah, it, it, there's like virtually no change. <laughs> it's more, I'm the same listener as I was when I was two years old. It's amazing. And is that anything like a genre of music that somebody would play and you would go, oh, I don't like, I'm not really keen on listening to that. Or do you just love everything? I kind of do love everything. Um, because, you know, no matter what you put on, there's something interesting to find there. There's or even if it's not your thing, you're listening to the immense uh, talent someone has or the incredible work they've put in. And there's something to really appreciate and respect there, too. That being said, like certain things like will stress me out to listen to. Like if I listen to like hardcore, like, you know, like Cookie Monster vocals, like metal, like death metal vocals, I feel stressed yeah. out. Like, oh, you're causing vocal damage. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah. I can appreciate it, though, like, you know, like my husband um, is my drummer and he, you know, will listen to all different kinds of like, you know, bands like Mashuga, for instance, you know, and I'm just like, I can get why this is amazing. Yeah, I just sure. I feel stressed out listening to it. <laughs> 
I think that's the thing. When you are a musician yourself, you know, you have a little bit more kind of respect and, and you know, understanding for how how much hard work goes into it because it's everybody sees it. It's a big um, career that people see on a day-to-day basis and think, oh, that's easy. All you've got to do is stand there and sing or play or, you know, and it's so not like that. So when you're within that industry, you can really appreciate, even if it's not to your taste, how much, work and dedication and commitment somebody has has had to get to where they are yeah absolutely totally and that's the thing I bet I don't know how you feel but when people say to me like oh you know it's not really a hard job is it you know just stand there and you just have to like uh. <laughs> there's a lot more to it than that there's a lot yeah. more to it than that yeah and also as well just the basics of, of being having the confidence and 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 Insurance to be able to stand there in front of people and, and open your mouth is, is really tricky, like really hard. Yeah, sometimes I think that's the hardest part because there's no formula for that. You can't practice that. There's no exercise we can really do. I mean, you know, we play all kinds of mind games with ourselves to try and, and get over that stuff, but it is what it is. Nerves are nerves, and they completely, like, mess with your ability to have good technique and all that kind of stuff, too, you know what I mean? So it's that is a really difficult one and you know something that we just have to like kind of hope for the best of. absolutely and do you suffer with nerves or do you have you know any skills before you go on stage to kind of combat that or just psych yourself up and get ready for it you know I think I'm more nervous about life off stage than on when I'm on stage that's when I feel really good and like, <laughs> yeah that's when I feel like all right I got I got this you know off stage I'm in anxious mess about things do you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> <That's>, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but on stage is you know that's my happy place you know that's where I feel amazing so yeah, I don't tend to get terribly nervous unless it's a really big event then of course I'll get really nervous if I have to sing at some you know really major venue or a really important event or something yeah for sure and do you find like if you have to speak um beforehand or thank people for coming or you know just little bits in between is that the worst part for you that's kind of my favorite part. I like the talking. Yeah, I, I have a really good time with all of this sort of stage patter and talking to people and all of that kind of, like, the entertainment part of it, I love. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. brilliant. I do. <laughs> so <laughs> if you could um, duet with anyone, who do you reckon would be your go-to duet partner? Oh, my God. You know, like... You know, the first person that pops into my head who is just like my favorite, favorite singer on the planet right now is um, Jamie Cullum. I just, oh yeah, oh my God, his voice, his, he's got my favorite voice in the world. He really? Is, yeah. I just think he's, I think the world of him. Yeah. And I've never gotten to sing with him. Someday, I hope. Amazing. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll have to put it out to him. <laughs> Manifesting. Manifesting. <laughs> And if you were um, to do a gig tomorrow, somebody said to you, right, I want you to perform five of your favorite songs. What would you sing? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? The thing is, is it, it like this is sort of my life all the time. Like, <laughs> that's the best thing is I always get to sing my favorite songs. And they're yeah. and songs have been my favorite songs since I was little. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like that. So, like, I'd be singing like Somewhere with Rainbow you know, I would probably sing, I'd sing something by Jobim, you know, okay. like Watch March or something like that. I'd sing something by Yvonne Lins. So maybe, um, you know, Love Dance or one of his really famous tunes, Commissage Novo. Um, and then I'd have to sing some swingers, you know what I mean? Maybe Honeysuckle Rose, Fats Waller, maybe that one, because that one I've really been singing since I was a toddler. And then yeah. a fifth favorite tune, oh, I don't know. That's tough. I don't know. That one, I that one, I'd have to let the audience request because I just couldn't possibly come up with another one. <laughs> and have you have you ever had requests and thought, oh my goodness, I don't really? <laughs> well, yeah, because sometimes it's like, you know, I think sort of like in the realm of like what I do in my job, 
like people make requests all the time, but they're requests that are songs that I sing, that are things I've recorded that are part of my repertoire. You know what I mean? Like someone will request Over the Rainbow or Honeysuckle Rose or a tune like that. But every now and then I'll get one that's like out of left field. Like someone doesn't understand that that's not what my job is. And it'll be like, you know, some very strange pop tune from a million years ago or something. And it'll be shouted out at me from an audience. And I'll just be like, excuse me, but I made a set list and that's not on it. So I'm uh, Uh sorry, folks. You know what I mean? Occasionally they come right out of left field and they're, and it's always really funny. I wish I could think of an example right now, but I can't, but normally, yeah, I get all these really lovely requests that are things in my repertoire. And then that's awesome because I can't wait to, you know, give people a song they really want. That's the greatest, you know? Yeah, for sure. So talk us through some of your favorite performance venues. Where have you loved performances that hold a special place in your heart? You know, I think my favorite places, you know, I could say like the giant fancy halls and things that I've sung in, but I think my favorite places are the really, really special jazz clubs. Um, My favorite of which closed a long time ago. It used to be in Rio uh, de Janeiro. It was called um, Mistura Fina and it was the coolest jazz club in the world. Um, But there are a lot of jazz clubs in the States that I really love. Um, Blues Alley in Washington, D.C. is one of my favorites. Um, Birdland in New York is one of my favorites. Um, Ronnie Scott's in London is one of my favorites. Um, There are a lot of really special small venues like that. Those are the ones that I think are really close to my heart because they're the ones we go back to again and again. We form relationships with the audiences there and the staff and everybody. And then it's, you know, every performance feels really special. Yeah. And do you really like the intimate venues then? Yeah, because you can interact with the audience more. You know what I mean? During the tunes, it's fun no matter where you are. You're making music and it's beautiful. But like actually talking with the crowd and everything, when you're in a small venue, you can kind of get into that more and it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've been to the UK then? Oh, yeah. Millions of many, many millions of millions of times. Wow, amazing. British too and Welsh and Scottish and that's where my roots are from on my mother. Yeah. So I love getting to come there. And I've, I've, I've spent a little time in Wales. I've played the Brecon Jazz Festival a couple times. and um, yep. But yeah, I love the UK. I feel very at home there. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so pleased to hear it. I'm so pleased to hear it. So um, a song or a lyric um, that you just love? Oh, God, there's one favorite lyric that comes to mind immediately. I was just discussing this with one of my students the other day. Uh, there's this tune um, called Corcovado. It's a Jobim tune. And, uh, you know, it was written in Portuguese, but there's a beautiful English lyric written by a very famous writer, Jean Lees. And there's this one line in it that makes me crazy. And it goes, I, who was lost and lonely, believing life was only a bitter, tragic joke, have found with you the meaning of existence. Oh, my love. (laughs) It's like not too dramatic, right? And I was totally like talking about this with a student the other day and she's just a kid and, you know, and she was just like, so romantic. And yeah, (laughs) that's my favorite lyric of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so poetic and so poignant in so many different ways. I love that one. That's beautiful. Yeah. Lovely. So talk us through some of your wow moments, standout moments in your career that you will never, ever forget. Well, I think the the things that really come to mind are the like the, the moments where I've gotten to work with people that were really amazing, like gotten to, you know. I've gotten to work with Yvonne Leans a lot of times, and that was huge for me working with Yvonne. Um, I've gotten to sing with a lot of you know, heavy, heavy, heavy jazz players, people yeah. like, you know, Ron Carter and Tommy Flanagan and Hank Jones and Kenny Barron and, you know, I mean, Ray Brown, um, you know, those are the moments that really stand out to me rather than like, oh, I sang in Carnegie Hall or I sang at the Hollywood Bowl. Like those things are amazing. But for me, it's more about like the chances I had to learn from the greats. Sure. You know? Of course. Yeah. It's more like the experiences and the opportunities rather than like, you say where where you were and yeah sometimes I guess like from the outside like you say those big big places people would go well well why would you not say that because that was huge and we saw that and that was like you say it's the it's the 
friendships and the bonds that you form and that you make and, and those kind of like, oh my God, pinch me moments. I'm actually stood on stage with you and I was actually in a rehearsal room chatting with you. Yeah. And, that's oh, almost the, the rehearsal room is almost crazier than the stage. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the that's the nutty feeling is like rehearsing with the person, being backstage with them. You know what I mean? Like that that's the crazy thing. That that's where you hear the real stories and you know, get to know the people and um those are the pinch me moments. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. So talk us through life in quarantine in um, you know, how have you found it? What have you been doing to keep busy? Um, how's it been going? Well, we're all right. Um, you know, I had been on the road nonstop for my entire adult life. So it was at the beginning, it was great to like slow down for a minute, um, especially because I'm a mom. Um, our son was on the road with us until he was eight, but now he's 12. In the last couple of years, he's been in school. So, uh, you know, I've missed out on a lot the last couple of years. So it was nice to to be home, you know, and and yeah. still to be home with him. So right now we're really just focused on, you know, distance learning and all of that. We're doing online concerts once a month. Um, okay. Yeah, but otherwise we're just sticking it out and, you know, wearing our masks and doing the right thing. Yeah, for sure. So did you have things planned then during during lockdown? What did you have planned that kind of got pulled or postponed? Oh, four million tour dates got canned. Oh, just a million tour dates. I did make a record though. I made a new album. That's coming out in March. So that's good. Yeah. So I was glad I was able to get that done. I think a lot of people were able to record and stuff during lockdown. I think we're going to see, we're already seeing a lot of new albums and singles and all different projects coming out, but I think we're going to see more and more um, because artists are frustrated, you know, they're creating like crazy, but yeah, I was able to make a record. So I'm really happy of that. And um, yeah, out in March. Awesome. Can you tell us anything about it or is it all very secretive? Oh, it's not secretive at this point. Um, it's called Come What May. Uh, and it's a collection of, you know, great American songbook tunes. And they're songs that have a little bit of a more mature lean. They're ones that, you know, I'm sort of ready to sing now that I'm in my 40s, kind of. That's a bit of a theme there, you know. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. When you're in quarantine, what do you think you've missed most about the normal everyday? <laughs> I miss traveling the most. I miss it horribly. I can't stand being stuck. I'm not used to it. I haven't held still since I was 20 years old. Um, right. So it's making me, I, in my dreams, every single night I travel. Every night in my wow. dreams, I'm getting on planes and boats and trains. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, you really are missing it. Yeah, in a big way, in a big way. Yeah. So you used to genuinely be on the road, like all the time? All the time, yeah. All the time for over 20 years. I don't know, for about 20 years. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. That's Where great. have you been? Everywhere. Literally uh-huh. everywhere. 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 There are a lot of notable places I have not been that I'm dying to go to. I, I've been nowhere in Scandinavia. Uh, you know, and uh, let me think where else. There's, uh, I don't know, I've been a lot of places. There are a lot of places in South America I haven't been yet. Um, Central America I haven't been yet. I've, I've really been a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> and have you had a, fa- if you could, if you had to, somebody said to you, you have to pick a favorite place. Where would you pick? Oh my gosh. Probably Brazil. Probably Brazil. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Like Brazil. Yeah. Well, the people are so beautiful and warm and kind. And I mean, the vibe is incredible and it's just the natural beauty of the place is insane. But then it's the music, you know, the music's crazy that that whole thing is to be around it and immersed in it that way it's just it's life-changing amazing so I'm going to ask you some random questions now if you could open your own shop what would you sell oh my god makeup (laughs) yes I would makeup makeup love it it's my other obsession great American songbook and yeah makeup I'm terrible I'm just obsessed I love it. So you're one of those people who's just got like hordes of it. Oh my, it's terrible. Well, I, I try to not keep too much, you know what I mean? Like I try to like only keep what I need and stuff like that and not like buy things that aren't necessary, but yeah, I probably do it more than I need. (laughs) Hey, you're all good. It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. I love your nails, by the way. I saw them just now and I was like, I just had to take mine off. 
quarantine press on, baby. Yes. No way, they're not. Oh ready. yes, these are these cost like eight bucks. Oh yes, we are being frugal with our glamour. Yes. <laughs> I am. I am impressed. So I used to have mine done so gel overlays over the top of my nails were always so beautiful, and then I know, yeah. I miss- I missed having my nails done so much that I, I, uh, yeah, I tried doing these little press on jobbies and they're actually like really sturdy and good. And I'm having so they're much fun insane. feeling glamorous again. <laughs> I, I'm so impressed right now. I thought, oh my gosh, she's obviously got one of those like really cool kits at home. And she's like, you know, yeah. she's... glue, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. Never have I been so like, very impressed. Very, very impressed. <laughs> That's the thing, like, it's led us to have to do this kind of thing. Like, I've never dyed my hair myself in, like, 26 years. Never happened. Never happened at all. And it was like, somebody needs to sort my hair out. Oh, get a box. <laughs> Chuck it on. You know, I've always done everything myself because I just like to. Like, I've done my own hair and makeup for everything for a million years. Um, uh, I even do my own makeup for photo shoots. So, um like the whole quarantine thing, it hasn't killed my vibe in that regard. Um, Cause I'm a DIY person, but, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I feel everyone's pain though, for sure. God, I know. It's just, hair, hair. And like back in, I think it was August when we were allowed out, like I had my hair, my hair was super, super long and I had my hair cut to about like just a short, really short bob. And like now you would never know. Cause it's just, it's gone so <laughs> long. You're like, what happened? Just, I don't know. Yeah. I, I had a haircut around the same time. It's totally grown out too. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, what? it is what it is. It's gonna be a mess For right sure. now. It's okay. And if you were hosting a dinner party, what would you and which five people would you invite to your dinner party? Any five people in the whole world. What would I cook? I'd make well, I I love to cook. Okay. And I cook. I, I seriously, like, seriously cook Italian food. So I'd make something Italian. Um, I married into a big Italian family, and I learned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I invite uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Judy Garland, Fred Astaire. Um, I'm keeping it fun. I'm not going to get, like, heavy or political or anything like that. I'm going to keep it, like, yep. entertaining. Right. Right ahead. Ella. Oh. Judy, Fred Astaire, Frank Sinatra, and oh, oh, who else? Who would be fun? Oh, God, I don't know. This is hard. One more? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Um, Duke Ellington. He'd be really interesting. I'd have a million questions. There, there, there we go. <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious I genuinely don't think you'd get a word in edgeways so though you'd have to like fight your way through it oh I know between Frank holding court Judy would be like drunk and getting loud <laughs> but, oh my yeah. god that would be incredible so you said earlier about loving musicals do you have a favorite um favorite of all time probably into the woods um but other than that, um, I really love, you know, the more classic musicals, Richard Rodgers, Meredith Wilson, all that, you know. Yeah. Amazing. And what about a show you said about Over the Rainbow? Is there another one? A know? show tune that I love to do? You know, li- lately I've been singing a lot of Sondheim. Um, yeah. My accompanist and I have been getting into, like, playing jazz versions of Sondheim, and we've got a... So we've been doing a few. We've been playing Not a Day Goes By. We've been playing Greenfinch and Linnet Bird. We've got a cool version of. We've been playing Being Alive. So, yeah, those sort of Sondheim moments have been fun right now. Yeah. Yeah. Zoo or a park? Zoo. Comedy or horror? Horror. Yes. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Heels or flats? Flats. Tea or coffee? Tea. Yay. That was good. That was so funny that you were like, horror. I was like, oh, God. No. Yes. No, I'm actually like a horror movie fanatic. Are fanatic. you? I watch horror movies like almost daily. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. It's weird. Do you, ha- do you have a favorite? Um, I don't have a favorite, but uh, all time, if I had to pick, maybe Poltergeist. Oh, I don't know that one. That's probably my, the original Poltergeist. 
Spielberg. Yeah. Not the ridiculous remake, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get in. She's going to go on it. She's going to be like, see. <laughs> I, I can't. I just, I just can't. I've seen, I've seen a few and, and it's terrifying. I, I, no. I, just, I, just, I don't like being scared. I think that's the thing. It's just like, you, do you like that? That's the jumpiness. Well, they don't really scare me. I don't know. I don't really get scared by horror movies anymore. I'm more watching them like, oh, wow, that was cool how they tried to do that. I mean, it didn't freak me out, but it was a good try. You know what I mean? It's like I'm more watching them like that. Like it. I mean, I don't get it. I just, oh. Oh, so that's maybe my one of my favorite novels of all time, too. Yeah. Oh, you've read the books as well. Oh, I've read all the... Stephen King is my favorite author. I've read everything he's ever written. Yeah, I'm a horror freak. It's, yeah, it's like my oh thing. My God. <laughs> For me, like, I don't... I know everyone's different, but that's worse. Like, when you're reading something, your imagination and, like, your, you know, everything just, like, it, it's a seed. Whereas when you're watching something, it's, you know, see what's happening and, and there it yeah. is. It doesn't, you know? So it's not, Yeah, it's more unsettling to read it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I can't. So um, what advice do you think you would give your younger self? Um, well, I, that advice would have everything to do with just dealing with the business. Do you know what I mean? And like, you know, I kind of got treated poorly by, by people in the beginning. Not by everyone. I had wonderful people around me too. But there were some notable, you know, uh, situations where, I now I would react totally differently and protect myself and things like that. So I would, yeah. I would tell myself to be brave enough to say no to things I, I didn't want to happen and, you know, stand up for myself when people weren't treating me fairly. And is that kind of some of the, the things that you would say to students, you know? Oh, absolutely. And I do all the time. Yeah. You know, I do. Um, you know, I definitely spend a lot of time encouraging young people to stand up for themselves. That is for sure. Yeah. And what do you love most about teaching? Well, you know, like, honestly, just it's so wonderful to sort of find kindred spirits in this music, you know, and just talk about these songs and connect with people all over the world of all different ages. I mean, <clears throat> my students range in age currently from, I think my youngest is about 16 and my eldest is probably my parents' age, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, which would be in, probably in their early 70s, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I love how we just cross generations and cultures and borders and everything and we just come together and love music together. It's just my favorite. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. So my very last question for you now is kind of in two parts. What's next for you? Um, do you have anything kind of in the pipeline? Obviously, you touched on your music. And then what are your hopes in 2021 and, and the coming years? What would you, you know, what would you love to happen in an ideal world? Yeah, well, well, coming up, I just have this new album coming out. You know, right now there are no tour dates, obviously. Um, uh, but I am doing an online show uh, every single month. And um you know, they're not at an ideal time for watching from the UK. However, you know, they're available, they're recorded. So like if you buy a Zoom ticket, you know, from the UK, yeah. um, we will send you the concert to watch at any time that you want. And you actually get to keep it forever, too. You know what I mean? So it's awesome. kind of cool. Um, so doing all that and uh, album comes out March 12th. And uh, in terms of hopes for the future, we are hopeful today because we just had our inauguration right before I talked to you. We did. Oh, my God. Yes. We did. We just had it. We have a new president now. <laughs> it's official. Oh, wow. So we That's are feeling incredible. good today. And, yeah, hopes yeah. for the future are going wild today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely strong. And, and what an incredible, yeah, incredible day for you guys. Of course. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. All changed. Yeah. Yeah huge incredible well i really thank you so much for chatting with me today thank you. really really appreciate it no no thank you because i know like everybody says oh it's quarantine or lockdown or whatever you want to call it like we're not doing anything but we are we're trying to keep ourselves busy with different things and trying to yeah. with, with certain you know certain commitments that we want to try and kind of still keep to and, and finding different things that we can keep ourselves busy with and like you say you know you've got a little boy who <laughs> needs your attention as, as anything and that in itself is you know homeschooling is hard man <laughs> yeah, 
my husband does the bulk of it because he's just better at it than me. Thank God. But it's not, it's, it's difficult and it's middle school. It's a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's tough. It's tough. But I yeah. really, really appreciate it. such a wonderful time chatting with you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you so much. No worries at all. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll send you the link when it goes up on the channel. You'll have to send me all of your bits and bobs that are coming up and we can, we can, you know, plug it and, and post it for sure. Awesome. Thank you. No worries at all. I'd love to keep in touch as well. Keep in touch, chat about what, what's going on. Speak again soon. Awesome. Wonderful. You take care of yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much, Jane. I had such a wonderful time chatting with you and all my very best wishes for 2021. Another fantastic guest coming up next. Take care. Bye.